everyone i am ananya ashok rao of class 10th a today i'll be speaking about women freedom fighters of india firstly a very happy independence day to all of you as we know for india to be freed from the clutches of the british it has cost many freedom movements many freedom fighters and many years of struggle the resilience of the struggle only got higher and higher with every movement each freedom fighter sacrifice paved way for another sacrifice inspired millions of freedom fighters and fueled the freedom struggle each incident in the freedom struggle helped to ignite and raise the burning desire of freedom in the hearts of the people of india in this struggle for freedom all indians gave their hearts and souls including men and women today let us know about some important women freedom fighters in our freedom struggle lakshmi bai the rani of jhansi a household name jhansi ki rani is a well recognized symbol of women empowerment she was one of the leading fighters in the initial stages of the freedom struggle of india she is also a very strong inspiration to thousands of women even today she was born on november 19th in the year 1828 in banaras now called varanasi into a marathi karhade brahmin family Her father was Moropan Tambe and her mother was Bhagirathi Sapre. Her childhood name was Mani Karnika Tambe. She was educated at home and she knew to read and write. She was trained in archery, horse riding, sword fighting and mallakham. Later, she was married to Gangadhar Rao Nevarkar, the Maharaja of Jhansi in 1842. After which she came to be known as Lakshmi Bai. In 1851, she gave birth to a son who was named Damodar Rao. Unfortunately, he died after four months. The Maharaja and Rani then adopted Anand Rao, who was later renamed as Damodar Rao. However, it is said that the Maharaja could not bear the loss of his son, and he passed away in 1853. The British tried to use this situation in their favor by imposing the doctrine of laps on Jhansi. The Rani was offered an annual pension of sixty thousand rupees in the year 1854, and she was ordered to leave the fort. However, she had determined to not surrender her kingdom to the British. In order to strengthen the defense of Jhansi, she assembled an army of rebels and later decamped to Kalpi, where she joined other rebel forces. However, while battling against the Eighth Hussars in Kota ki Sirai, Rani Lakshmi Bai died a warrior's death. After this, the British could capture Gwalior and Jhansi. However, her bravery inspired many others to fight for their freedom. she proved that gender does not decide the strength and fearlessness of a person kanaklata barua a freedom fighter who is very often lost in the pages of history kanaklata barua was just a teenager when she sacrificed herself for the sake of the country she was an independence activist and an aisf leader she is rightly considered as a metaphor for fearlessness and leadership she was born on december 22nd in 1924 at borangabari gopur in the darang district which is at present in assam her parents were krishna kanta and karneshwari barua she lost her mother when she was just 5 years old and then her father when she was 13 she discontinued her education after class 3 to take care of her younger siblings this shows that she was very responsible when the quit india movement had begun in india she joined the mrityu bahini a gopur youth death squad The squad had decided to hoist the national flag at the local police station which was dominated by Britishers. Kanaklata led a procession of villagers in order to accomplish this brave feat. The police had warned them that this attempt could result in dire consequences. However, the squad was firm and continued marching ahead. To this kind of reaction, the police started firing. Kanaklata who was the face of the procession was shot down. The flag in her hands was taken up by Mukunda Kakoti who was also shot. Kanaklata was just 17 when she laid down her life for the nation. Now known as Bir Bala and Shaheed, Kanaklata shows that responsibility and bravery come not with age but with the determination to be responsible and brave. These brave daughters of India have shown that women are equals of men. in every aspect they have been role models to the women of every generation the values followed by these women freedom fighters are exemplary ways to fulfill the purpose of life my mother india is the mother of brave and valiant children 
My country is the birthplace of many strong men and women. With these lines, I would like to end my speech about Women Freedom Fighters of India. Once again, a very happy Independence Day to all of you. Thank you. Jallianwala Bagh Massacre The Jallianwala Bagh had witnessed a massacre at the hands of the British one or two years ago when thousands of men, women and children were killed on the orders of British General Reginald Dyer. The firing continued for 10 to 15 minutes, 1,650 rounds were fired. The firing ceased only after the ammunition had ran out. The total estimated figure of the dead as given by General Dyer and Mr. Irving was 291. However, other reports including that of a committee headed by Madan Mohan Malviya put the figure of dead at over 500. Civil Disobedience Movement after the non-cooperation movement ended, Gandhiji started a bigger movement, the Civil Disobedience Movement. One of the main reasons for this movement was the monopoly the British had on salt in India. Indians were prohibited from collecting and manufacturing salt. Gandhiji hence started his famous Dandi March, a 241-mile journey on foot to salt mines in Gujarat. His one act of defense started one of the biggest civil disobedience movement in the world. Chauri Chaura incident took place on 4th February 1922 at Chauri Chaura in Gorakhpur district of the United Provinces in British India when a large group of people protested participating in the non-cooperation movement. The incident led to the death of three civilians and 22 policemen. Mahatma Gandhi, who was strictly against violence, halted the non-cooperation movement. In spite of Gandhi's decision, 19 arrested demonstrators were sentenced to death and 14 to imprisonment for the life of British colonial authorities. Non-cooperation movement This movement of non-cooperation was launched on 4th September 1920 by Mahatma Gandhi with the aim of self-governance and obtaining full independence that is Pune Swaraj. Gandhi's planning for the non-cooperation movement included persuading all the Indians to withdraw their labour from activities that sustain the British government and also economy in India. Thank you. This day is most important day for all of us because on this day in 1947, we got independence from the British rule. Friends, our great freedom fighters like Mahatma Gandhi, Pandit Nehru, Lokamanya Tilak, Lal Lajpat Rai, Bhagat Singh, Subhash Chandra Bose, Rani Lakshmi Bai and many others devoted their entire life for the freedom for our country. Today, we are fortunate that we are born in an independent country and we have our own fundamental rights. Our freedom is priceless and our brave soldiers fight continuously on borders to protect our country. Friends, we all know that no nation is perfect. It needs to be made perfect. So, it is our responsibility to sincerely perform our duty and progress to gather for the growth and development of our country. Surely, the day is not so far that when our country will be strong and powerful in every field. Jai Hind and Jai Bharat. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Kapoor H, the standard reception. Today I am going to say about our national flag. Tricolor refers to Indian national flag. And our flag has horizontal tricolor, saffron at the top, white in the middle and green at the bottom. In the center, there is navy blue we call Ashoka Chakra with 24 
morning to everybody. My name is Akshay Shukra. I am studying in 4th standard. Today, I am going to say few slogans. Do or die said by Mahatma Gandhiji. Satya Meva Jayate said by Madan Mohan Malaviya. In Kalab Zindabad said by Bhagat Singh. Jai Hind said by Subhas Chandra Bos. Vande Mataram said by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. Thank you. ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ಸ್ಫೂರ್ತಿ ನಾನು ಒಂಬತ್ತನೇ ತರಗತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಂಗ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸ್ವತಂತ್ರ ದಿನಾಚರಣೆಯ ಪ್ರಯುಕ್ತವಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಇಂದು ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ರವರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕಿರುಪರಿಚಯವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿ ಮಾಡಲಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಚಂದ್ರ ಬೋಸ್ ಇವರು ಜನಿಸಿದ್ದು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಎಪ್ಪತ್ತೇಳು ಜನವರಿ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತ್ಮೂರರಂದು ಒಡಿಶಾದ ಕಟಕ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇವರ ಜನನವಾಯಿತು ತಂದೆ ಜಾನಕಿ ನಾಥ ಬೋಸ್ ಮತ್ತು ತಾಯಿ ಪ್ರಭಾವತಿ ಆ ದಂಪತಿಗಳ ಹದಿನಾಲ್ಕು ಜನ ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ಒಂಬತ್ತನೆಯವರಾಗಿ ಜನಿಸಿದರು ಕಟಕ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ರಯಾವೇಶ ಕೋಲಿ ಎಜೆಟ್ ಶಾಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಥಮಿಕ ವ್ಯಾಸಂಗವನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಖ್ಯೋಪಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಬೇಣಿ ಮಾಧವ ದಾಸರಿಂದ ಪ್ರೇರಣೆ ಮುಂದೆ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದರ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯಗಳು ಪತ್ರಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ಕೊಲಂಬೋದಿಂದ ಆಲ್ಮೋರಾಕ್ಕೆ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಗಳಿಂದ ಪ್ರಭಾವಿತರಾಗಿ ಬೋಸರು ಅರವಿಂದರ ಆರ್ಯ ಮಾಸಪತ್ರಿಕೆಯ ಒಪ್ಪಂದ ಓದುಗ ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತರಲ್ಲಿ ತತ್ವಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಿ ಎ ಪದವಿ ನಂತರ ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಹತ್ತೊಂಬತ್ತರ ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ ಹದಿನೈದರಂದು ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆಗಾಗಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲೆಂಡಿಗೆ ಪಯಣ ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತರಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಂಬರ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾಲ್ಕನೆಯ ಸ್ಥಾನಿಗರಾಗಿ ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪದವಿ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತಿ ವಿದೇಶಿ ನೌಕರಿ ಒಲ್ಲೆ ಎಂದು ಗಳಿಸಿದ್ದ ಐ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಪದವಿಯನ್ನು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂದರ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆರಡರಂದು ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಭಾರತ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಸಚಿವ ಎಡ್ವಿನ್ ಪತ್ರವೊಂದನ್ನು ಬರೆದು ಮರಳಿಸಿದ್ದರು ಬೋಸ್ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ತಿಂಗಳ ಇಂಗ್ಲೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಸದ ನಂತರ ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂದರ ಜುಲೈ ಹದ್ ಹದಿನಾರರಂದು ಮುಂಬೈಗೆ ಮರಳಿದರು ಬೋಸ್ ಅಂದೇ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿಯವರ ಜೊತೆ ಮೊದಲ ಭೇಟಿಯಾಯಿತು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂಬೈನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೊಂದರ ಆಗಸ್ಟ್ನಿಂದ ಚಿತ್ತರಂಜನ್ ಜಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶನದಲ್ಲಿ ಯುವಕರ ಸಂಘಟನೆಗೆ ಆದ್ಯತೆ ಪಡೆದರು ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣದ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿಯುತ ಸ್ಥಾನದಲ್ಲಿದ್ದು ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರದ ಹಿತಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಧಕ್ಕೆಯಾಗುವ ಯಾವುದೇ ವಿಷಯಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ದುರ್ಬಲ ನೀತಿ ಹೊಂದಿರಬಾರದೆಂಬ ಸುಭಾಷ್ ರವರ ನೆತ್ತೆಲುವಿನ ಮಾತುಗಳಿಂದ ನನ್ನ ಈ ಭಾಷಣವನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ